Amen. 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 Well, we all can walk in freedom and liberty because of what Jesus did on the cross. And it says in John 8, 36, that whom the Son is has set free, that's Jesus Christ, who he has set free is free indeed. That means that the enemy cannot come and steal our freedom or our liberty unless we allow him to come in the door. And so we want to we want to walk in that liberty. Uh, I, you know, every single day, I want to walk free of sickness and disease. I want to walk free of cares and worries. I want to walk free uh, from any type of anxiety. Uh, and and in my in my daily walk with the Lord, uh, I want there to be that liberation. Uh, we welcome Mary uh, tonight. Um, Galatians uh, five. One says that it is for freedom's sake or for liberty that Christ has set us free. It says, stand firm, therefore, and do not let yourselves be hot burdened again by the yoke of bondage. And I believe that, that Wendy said this, and I believe that Lucy said this, that, that liberty meant free of bondage. Well, that's actually what that word uh, in the in the Greek means. It means um, free of any type of bondage, anything that tries to come and hold us down or bind us up. And so we we can walk free uh, today, every single day. Hallelujah! But it says that we're not to go back into that bondage again. And, and why was he telling uh, the Galatians this, the church at Galatia? Because they had allowed false teaching to come into the church at Galatia that tried to put them back under the law, back under Moses' law. If you read chapter 3 of Galatians, it starts out in verse 1 and says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Do you think that because you uh, that you started in the spirit that you're going to be able to continue in the flesh? And the answer to that question is no. That, and, and so they had gotten off track and, and they had gone back into bondage. And, and religion is bondage. Being spiritually minded is life and peace. And it says to be carnally minded is to be death. And so we want we want that kingdom mindset in us that we are free, that we have been liberated by Jesus Christ uh, going to the cross and giving himself for us. Hallelujah. I, I found this scripture as I was studying today and I thought it was very interesting. It's in Psalms, and it's one of David's Psalms, Psalms 119, verse 45. And it says, I will walk in liberty, for I have sought out your precepts. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And so that's one of the ways that we walk in liberty is that we seek the kingdom of God first. Matthew 6, 33. We seek his kingdom first and his righteousness, and all of these things are added unto us. And so it says, I'm going to, I'm going to walk in the liberty because I'm seeking you. I'm, I'm seeking out what you're saying to me. I'm seeking out your way of living. I'm seeking out uh, what does it mean to walk in liberty? Hallelujah. And then, of course, this is one of my favorite scriptures, and that's Luke 4, 18. The very first Bible study I taught, the Holy Spirit uh, instructed me to start with this scripture right here. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's upon her. <laughs> because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom or liberty 
to the captives or the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free. Hallelujah. 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 And that, that's our job. That's what you're supposed to be doing. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what Brother Fred is supposed to be doing. The Holy Spirit and, and is hope. upon us, uh, has anointed us hallelujah. to set people free. Amen. Set, set ourselves free, set other people free. Praise the name of Jesus. It says in Isaiah 58, verse 6, and of course, Isaiah 58 is, is our foundational chapter. This is this uh, the ministry that the Lord has given to us was built on Isaiah 58 the whole chapter but isaiah 58 verse 6 says is this not the kind of fasting i have chosen to loose the chains of injustice to untie the heavy cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and hallelujah. break every yoke yes amen hallelujah that's what we're all supposed to do that is our job right there that is what we are commissioned to do if you see someone in bondage, that you bring them out of that bondage, that you destroy that yoke that the enemy has tried to put on them. You know, Matthew 11, uh, verses 28 through 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it oh, says, man. Take my yoke upon you. So we need to get yoked up to Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's going to keep us free. Amen. Hallelujah. Jerry, I've got a question for you. Did you set somebody free yesterday at the restaurant? Uh, so, uh, today. Was it today? Was this, this morning. morning. Okay, yeah, this morning. Yes. Uh, I met with a, a couple of other women for a short Bible study this morning at the Waffle House. Hallelujah. I love the Waffle House. And... Uh, and as we got up to leave, we were asked to come outside in the parking lot and pray for one of the, the servers. She had just found out that her ex-husband uh, had passed away, had died quickly or suddenly. And she was very upset. She was very upset. And so the three of us, there were three of us in the Bible study. And so we went out and we prayed and we uh, brought hope to her. We brought peace to her. And the Lord delivered her out of that yoke of grieving. And uh, because when we left her, there was a smile on her face. And, and she said out of her mouth, I know that the Lord is going to help me with this. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what she said. That's a good, Hallelujah. A good example of what we're talking Brilliant. about. Tonight. Exactly. Exactly. But when we're yoked up to Jesus, then we take on everything that he has for us when we're yoked up to him. And it says, I believe in Corinthians, um, that we are not to be yoked up with unbelievers. Because if we're yoked up to unbelievers, then that is going to put us back into bondage. Into bondage. Uh, you know, we pray for this group uh, every day. And one of the things that we pray for each one of you is Galatians 1.4 that says you've been delivered from this present evil world. Amen. Amen. When we pray, we speak that over Amen. each one of you. Amen. That we have been, uh, you have been delivered from this present evil world. However, if you go back into that worldly environment, uh, you know, watching, you know, too much of the news or listening too much of, of what other people are saying about the economy and and the banking institutions and the the debt for the country and and everything that's going on right now uh if if a person listens to that then they become entangled with the affairs of this world Whew. and you know i believe it's second timothy says that a soldier does not get entangled with the affairs of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Sure, I want to give a quick sure. testimony yeah. about, back about the being unequally yoked. And uh, I do a lot of walking, but most of my walking is in the uh, is in the woods, and so the ground's not level. But uh, yesterday, as I was walking on the sidewalk for a while, I, I got looking at my feet, and uh, one of them was turned out a little bit. And uh, uh, just from the wear and tear uh, uh, on life of life, and uh, so I came back in and I told Sherry that what was interesting to me, I, I couldn't, it was like being unequally yoked uh, because I just couldn't go straight. And so that mm -hmm. caused my knee to hurt. It caused my back to hurt. Right. I came back in and uh, she uh, prayed for me and the Lord uh, put my hips into alignment, put my legs into alignment. He aligned my frame. Uh -huh. And it's a good example of uh, un being unequally yoked. If you mm -hmm. get to with someone who's going to take you off in the wrong direction, it brings all kinds of pain, all kinds of chaos and turmoil in your life. And I just recognized that yesterday, that both of my feet needed to go straight. And so I needed my frame to be uh, straightened and, and the Lord did it and I and all the pain in my knee is gone my oh, pain in my back is gone and I give him praise and honor but I think it's a great application to what you're talking about. Amen. That is exactly right. It's exactly right. You know Isaiah 10 27 it shall come to pass in that day that the burden will be taken away from your shoulder. Hallelujah. And his yoke from off your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. You know, the anointing is on the word of God. And the more word you have, the more anointing you will carry uh, in inside of you and be able to bring it forth when you pray for people, when you speak to people uh, about the Lord, when you lay hands on people and see them recover for sickness and disease. That anointing is on the word of God that's in you. Hallelujah. So the more words you have in you, the more anointing. And it says that the yoke is destroyed through the anointing. And um, and we, we can, you know, just like Brother Fred said, you know, we pray for one another. We pray for one another. And it says, Confess your sins one to another. Pray for one another that you might be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, another thing I want you to remember, and then I'm going to go to the into, into the book of Daniel. But in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, again, this is in 2 Corinthians. Remember, he wrote two, two books to the Corinthians because they were full of flesh. They were full of carnality. And they had mingled with the unclean. They had done things that they should not have done. And um, even though they had the, the gifts there, they were Christians. They were born again but they were still carnal uh, because they were letting their flesh overcome uh, the word of God that, that was in them. So, and they so, were, so they were immature. They were immature. And Paul had to pray that they would mature. That's exactly right. And he says, come out, come out from among uh, the unbelievers, come out from among those that still have those, that uh, religious mindset. Come out from among them and be ye separate. You know, and sometimes it's, you You know, you may feel like you're walking this pathway by yourself. And I know that I certainly felt that way when when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and I, we came out of the denomination uh, that we were in. Uh, I felt that way. I felt alone uh, in that I was... I was doing this, you know, um, by myself, but I know that the Lord was with me and, and he brought us into a community, if you will, 
And I know that's a big key word that people use. He brought me into a community of spiritual believers who believed in the Holy Spirit, who believed in the gifts of the Spirit, who believed in miracles, who believed that God can do anything. You know, the other morning I woke up and that, that chorus, my God can do anything, anything, anything. My God can do anything. He made the earth and all its fullness and all that will become. My God can do anything. You know, and when I when I sing that, it it encourages me and my spirit man begins to leap on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And it says, be not yoked, yoked up with unbelievers and do not be yoked with the cares of this world. Hallelujah. With worry. Did you know that worry is a sin? I have to, I have to. Uh, speak that to my sin and myself. If I start to get concerned about something and start to worry about something, I have to remind myself that that is sin and whatever, I don't want to do it. Whatever is not of faith is sin. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, another thing I want you to remember before we go to the book of Daniel is that it says in 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Ooh, liberty. 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 He sets us free. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, in the book of Daniel, and I know that every one of us know this story, but let's just kind of get a visual, if you will, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And here, this big image was made of the king. And the king says, everybody has to bow down to this image. You know, and, and can we relate that to the world that we're living in today? That the, the government wants us to bow its knee. Uh, sometimes the uh, church congregations want us to bow our knee to, to what they want. Um, maybe everybody has to think the same thing, speak the same thing. If you say something out of a line that's not right. uh, not socially uh, acceptable, uh, then you get ridiculed. Right. But we don't have to bow our knee. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow their knee. And so the king says, okay, well, we're going to put you in the fire. We're going to put you in the fire and we're going to heat it up seven times hotter than it normally is. And so they bound them up. They put chains on them. They bound them up. They were fully dressed. They had their turbans on. They had their robes on and they put them in the fiery furnace. And they were there. Hallelujah. But the fire did something different to them than destroy them. What did the fire do? It destroyed the bondage. The ropes that were they're tied up with. They were tied with ropes and, and the, those ropes were burned off of them. And the king comes and looks inside. And he said, oh, wait a minute. Did we not put three men in here? Hallelujah. But I see four. Hallelujah. And he looks like the son of God. Oh. He had never seen the son of God. <laughs> he must look different. Woo! <laughs> and 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 so he was he was excited and the the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were excited. Hallelujah, because they had been um uh, the the bands of wickedness had been burned off of them. And I think that's one thing that we need to understand that the fire that's in us will burn out any bondage that the enemy tries to put on us. 
It's the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It says, and and Jesus and John the Baptist said, and Jesus is coming. Woo. There's Hallelujah. one coming yeah. that's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Are you? Hallelujah. Fire. Amen. And I believe that these three men were baptized with fire Hallelujah. and they knew fire and they knew how to walk in the fire. Hallelujah. I'm talking about walking in liberty. And that means that you walk in that fire and that the enemy doesn't even want to come close to you. He doesn't want to give you a headache. He doesn't want to put sickness on you because he doesn't want to get close to you. <laughs> if you're on fire. If you're on fire. For Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Hallelujah. And I believe that the, the Holy Spirit in us will keep us in freedom. Amen. I believe that he will, will allow us to walk in that. You know, some people are crawling right now. Some people are just sitting still and not doing anything. But I believe that this group, the Lord wants us to go forward. Amen. And do his will. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that every one of you have a purpose and a plan. Yes. And he wants us to fulfill that. Right. And how do we fulfill that? Is that we walk in the freedom that he has given us. He walk in that liberty every single day. Amen. Hallelujah. I call it the day of liberation. Hallelujah. When you come to that day, and there there were there were, were times that I was bound up. I had a an issue with depression. I had an issue uh, with worry. I had an issue about thinking, well, uh, what if this happens or what if that happens? Do you know that that when you say what if, that is doubt and unbelief. And the Holy Spirit told me one day, stop saying that. What if this happens? What if that happens? He says, you begin to speak what you want to happen. Hallelujah. What do you want to happen? That's good, Jerry. I desire for my children to serve the Lord. Yes. I desire uh, for my marriage to be what God wants it to be. I desire that we that we have finances to pay all of our bills and that we have money left over to give into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it has been such a blessing to give into Sarah's life as she goes to East Asia. Because I remember two years ago, I remember where she was. I remember how God has moved in her life and made her strong and made her on fire mm -hmm. hallelujah if i if you want to talk about somebody on fire let's talk about sarah amen, amen. and i just uh you know i i thank the lord uh for just the opportunity to to give in into her life to plant into her life to plant that seed into her life amen. in the name of jesus hallelujah. but let's go back to shadrach meshach and abednego do you know what they said before the king put them in that furnace? They said, they spoke out, Oh, king, we're not going to bow down to you. Mm -hmm. And they said, God, our God will deliver us. And even if he doesn't deliver us, we're, we're still not going to bow down. That's right. Is that what they said? That's right. That's right. So see, they put it out there. Your words are important. And I'm not I'm not talking about the tongue tonight, but let me tell you something. Your words out of your belly, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord has told me recently we were flying back from Texas. And and by the way, the graduation for our granddaughter uh just went beautifully. And she was able to 
give the opening prayer at graduation and it was incredible and brother fred and i sat there and cried and cried and um it was it, it was just it, a it was an impactful yeah uh, prayer that she was praying over her classmates amen amen and so on the way back from texas the holy spirit spoke to me and said begin to speak over people begin to speak over them and so i encourage you to speak over your family to speak over uh those in in the government speak over your co-workers at work speak over uh what's going on in the in the in the worldly environment right now and uh begin to speak uh the word of god well give us and, an example uh, why don't you speak over all of us okay well father right now in the name of jesus i speak overflow to come to everyone that is viewing this video in jesus name i speak that that overflow will overtake them in their bodies that the overflow will overtake their minds that the overflow will overtake their families that the overflow will will overtake uh the their bodies and and bring healing into their bodies in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. What do you mean by overflow? Overflow of what? Overflow of the Spirit of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.